and so did yours. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks for joining us again. I am excited to have our second Meet the Candidates session. Uh, so for all of our viewers, I do want to run through a few uh, logistics and housekeeping. Um, so here's some notes about how things are going to work today. Uh, so first, everyone's on mute to keep the background noise to a minimum. Uh, and so for those of you who are panelists, feel free to also do the same. I see most of you have. Uh, that's great, um, but just because you're on mute does not mean we don't want to hear from you, so please do use the Q&A section of your control panel, so you should see that in your Zoom window, uh, to ask questions of the candidates, and you can ask something for a particular candidate or general questions that you want to hear from, from everyone. Um, here's how the session will work today. We're going to hear statements from the candidates first, so we'll hear just a little bit about who they are and why they're running. And then when that's done, we will go ahead and ask those questions, and folks will get a chance to respond. Candidates, you can respond to uh, any question that you like. If you don't want to respond, that's okay, too. Uh, and all you have to do is give me a wave, and I'll make note and call on folks uh, and give you a chance to respond. So uh, that's how that will work. And as a reminder, we're recording everything, so if you miss anything or you want to share with colleagues, you can definitely do that. Uh, we'll post that recording a little bit later today when it's done. And then as a reminder to everyone who's listening in, your interaction you know, and learning from the candidates does not have to end here. Every candidate has a profile page on the association website where you can actually ask them direct questions there as well. So candidates, remember to check there. Everyone else, feel free to go post questions. Uh, let's have it, keep the conversation going. And I think the last thing I want to say is that voting opens on March 7th, so just keep that date in mind. Please do take the time to vote and encourage folks to do that as well. So those are our logistical announcements. Any questions from anyone before we get going? No. Okay. Well, I'm going to take one pause because Enzo just joined as a viewer, and I'd like to make him a speaker. But not showing up on my list. So, you guys give me a second because I can't multitask today. I just don't have it in me. And I will add him as a panelist. So, Enzo, if you can hear me, I'm going to add you as a panelist here in just a second. You're going to get an email to be able to join us. <clears throat> So close to getting this done. I feel like I need dramatic music as I race against the clock. There we go. <laughs> so Enzo, uh, you should have an email to join us as a panelist uh, to let you log in directly since I can't see the viewers at the moment for some reason. All right. That said, we're going to go ahead and start with um, some with the introductions. So again, I'll give you guys two minutes to do intros. Ah, there's Enzo, excellent. And we will start with Alexandru because we'll go alphabetical by first name today. So, Alexandru. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Alexandru Badiou. I come from Romania. Um, I've been a very long Drupal user. Uh, I started about 12 years ago and uh, <clears throat> Until about two years ago, I worked with Drupal like for almost every day. Um, I uh, co-founded the Romanian Drupal organization in 2009, and I've participated in uh, organizing the Romanian Drupal camps and various other presentations uh, at different places in order to promote Drupal. Uh, I take a special interest in education. I used to teach programming courses at the University of Bucharest uh, about two or three years ago. I started doing the Global Training Days events here in Bucharest. And in about 10 hours, I will also start doing the first uh, full semester Drupal course at the University of Bucharest, which is a bit scary. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. I'm, yeah. Well, thank you. I'm early. I finished early. <laughs> 10 hours, 10 hours from now you start that class. All right, we're gonna yep. have to like, make sure that you get some good sleep tonight. <laughs> All right, after Alexandra, let's go to David. Hi, um, 
David Hernandez. I'm hail from New Jersey in the United States. Um, I've been working in IT for about 20 years and Drupal for about eight years. Um, I'm a local uh, group organizer, having been one of the founding members of the New Jersey group. Um, I do uh, a lot of local meetup um, organization, uh, help organize camps. Um, I'm a Drupal developer and educator. I've uh, spent a lot of time um, building websites with Drupal, using it as a product. I'm um, also a core contributor, a mentor, um, and for the last two years, I was a member of the Software Working Group, one of the governance bodies for uh, the Drupal Association. Um, my current role right now is um, a new role working with FFW, where I'm the manager of contribution and learning, where I am focusing on education and internal training of developers and staff, and also working to manage um, all of the company's contribution efforts to Drupal and the Drupal organization and um, open source in general. So that's a little, little bit about me. Um, I encourage you to go look at my profile on the association website to find out more because I've obviously written a lot more there. Um, the reason I'm running for the board is obviously we talk a lot about Drupal the product and a lot of the marketing efforts and things that go into really supporting its worldwide use, but I also want to make sure that we keep a focus on Drupal the people um, a lot of um, effort goes into these local organizations. I want to make sure that the DA continues with that effort. I want to make sure that there's a lot more support available for the individuals involved, the developers, everyone else, and that we continue um, having a voice on the board. Awesome. Thanks, David. All right. And then alphabetically by first name and by username today is Enzo. Worked out magically. Hi everybody. Uh, my my username is Enzo. My name is Eduardo Garcia. I am a Drupal developer from Colombia, living in Costa Rica, and I am co-founder of a workshop in Costa Rica named Anexus. And I am also co-founder of the Drupal uh, community in Costa Rica. And I am co-maintainer of the Drupal project Drupal Council for Drupal Eight. And I am running this year uh, for Drupal Association to try to increase the possibilities to have a more participation for emerging communities like Costa Rica or Asia or Africa. And right now, uh, I am in Singapore this morning, 4 a.m. And because I am in a tour uh, in Asia to try to encourage community to use Drupal A and especially Drupal Council, so I am participating in, in 18 meetups and a lot of camps in Asia in next three and a half months. That's it. Excellent. You guys get like timelier and timelier as we go. Um, good. Thanks, Enzo. And Jason, you are up next. Thank you. Um, I'll try not to buck the trend for timing. Um, <laughs> my name is Jason Pomentel. I live in uh, just outside Providence, Rhode Island in the States. Um, I've been working with uh, on the web for a little over 20 years now, and I've been working with Drupal for um, almost 10, so right around um, Drupal 5 and beta. Um, and since then, I've, uh, I've used it on a lot of projects, but I've also gotten really involved in, um, in doing a lot of speaking at, at Drupal events, at Drupal cons. I'm the uh, co-founder of the Drupal meetup in Providence. Um, I've helped at a bunch of camps with like Ned Camp, where actually Holly spoke last year, which was amazing, and um, and the Design for Drupal event in Boston. I also co-founded the Talking Drupal podcast um, with a bunch of really good friends, and um, and over the years, I just really enjoyed being a part of of the community in any way that I can. Um, and uh, as a designer, I really would like to uh, be involved in the board in order to help ease the, the onboarding path and participation for, uh, for designers and just non-technical non people in general. Um, we actually had a great conversation on Twitter today about a UX designer in, in uh, right outside Toronto who wants to get involved and, and didn't know how. Um, so just being able to kind of loop people in and, and help ease that path into contributing to, uh, to the Drupal product and the Drupal community um, is something that's, that's really important to me. Great. Thanks, Jason. And you did not buck the trend. Right on time. Uh, good. So, Jason, uh, after that is Matthew. He's going to find the unmute button. Matthew. 
Okay, look, see up. Okay, he's got it. It's right there. Oh, All right. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I've got I've got that horrible beach ball going on right now on uh, on my uh, on my computer. <laughs> um, and it uh, yeah. So anyway, my name is Matthew Saunders. Um, I'm currently one of your elected uh, Drupal Association board members, and I'm looking to be reelected re to continue the work that I've been doing. Um, and I thought it would be helpful to sort of share a little bit of that. I've been chairing the governance committee for the last two years, and highlights of that have uh, included uh, implementing board member term limits, um, which is really important for people to not burn out, increasing the term of elected uh, members to two years, and staggering those elected uh, members' terms so they overlap. Basically, I'm a governance geek, and I very much enjoyed that work, um, and I want to continue doing it. I also helped craft uh, the current vision and mission of the association through a series of workshops that we had, and I helped in the fundraising for Drupal 8 uh, Accelerate. Personally, I have nearly 20 years of technology uh, experience and nonprofit experience. In the Drupal world, I'm a project manager, and I've worked as an independent consultant, as a small business owner, as a tech leader for the migration of examiner.com from ColdFusion to Drupal 7, as a leader in agencies, and currently through App Innovation, uh, I'm the engineering lead for Pfizer's healthcare professional portal. Um, why am I an ideal candidate? Um, my time over the last nine years is focused on the community. I've been working with nonprofits, nonprofits boards, um, not just the, the association, but with schools as well. I've got a ton of experience with different cultures, working with a team that uh, spans the United States, Europe, United Kingdom, India, Canada. I'm a citizen of Canada, the United States, and the United Kingdom. My master's degree is focused on nonprofit governance and technology. I helped organize uh, DrupalCon Denver, helped uh, organize uh, Drupal Camp Colorado for the last eight years, spoken at uh, a lot of different Drupal events. And very much, I want to finish up my work as a community representative. So I'm hoping that I'll be granted that opportunity to serve for just two more years. So thanks very much. Hopefully that, uh, that was within the two and a half minutes. Yeah, you did great there. Awesome. And Michael, you're up next. Hello. Um, yes, my name is Michael, or some, a lot of people actually know me with my username Schnitzel. So um, I myself have also a candidate profile, so if you want to know more about me, how the name comes, um, just look there. But I myself have been active for more than six years in the Drupal community, and I've done a lot of different things. So I know the community, how it works. Um, but I also work with people all over the world, we have a company in three different continents. So I know the different needs and the different ways of communicating that people do in different cultures. Um, and I also understand the struggles the local community has, especially when I go to the different places like Cape Town or um, others, how they see the community, what issues they have. And also I have experience as a board member myself I'm a board member of Amazie, um, and I'm also a board member at the Frontend Conference Zurich uh, annual conference that we organize. What I would like to do um, during my term is um, make it easier for the community to engage with the board and especially the at-large members. Um, I've seen myself people asking questions, how can we interact, how can we bring our ideas. There is a lot of great ideas in the community to make the Drupal Association better, to make the community better, um, but there's no real way to communicate that. So, and because there are only two community representatives at the board, um, I think it's really important that we find a way for people to get in contact, and I would like to do that with, that we have sessions and buffs at camps where people can bring in their ideas and maybe even as we talked yesterday about it, having a website like change.org for Drupal um, where people can bring in ideas and we can vote about them. And I think that would make it much better for the community to involve. So that's me. Go to the website and vote for Schnitzel. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. And Ratchet, you are up next. You. Yeah. Thanks, Holly. Hello, everyone. I'm Rajat from Mumbai, the city that just hosted DrupalCon Asia. I've been involved in Drupal community for the last six years, six and a half years, and it's been an amazing experience. And it was kind of uh, serendipity. I, I was working on an NGO site while I was in my college, and 
that is how I discovered Drupal. And I didn't knew that time that, you know, Drupal would be my career. Later, I was working in a Drupal organization in Mumbai and I realized, you know, how great is this community when I first met Greece uh, in 2011 when he visited Mumbai. And that time, there, there wasn't a big community here in Mumbai, but that time I realized that let's do something. We started a Drupal Mumbai community with five members in 2011, and now we have more, more than 700 persons in this community. It's, I've seen it growing, and I love the way, you know, the Drupal community is so involving, great. I have taken several initiatives in Drupal community, Mumbai, uh, like, uh, you know, there's an educational program called Drupal Campus Ambassador Program, uh, which I'm running right now, as well as uh, we are also working on introducing Drupal to government in India. So that's pretty much about me. I'm currently working with Tata Consultancy Services as a technical architect. Thank you. Thanks, Ratchet. Just right. in two minutes. <laughs> yeah, you did a great job, uh, especially for 1.30 in the morning. Um, all right, two left. Shannon, you are up, and then we'll finish with Tom. Okay. Um, on my profile, there's a lot more information about uh, who I am and what I've done, but just to give you a short overview, I've been working with Drupal for about six years. I immediately and uh, very excitedly wanted to get involved in CORE and thought that it was an amazing opportunity to contribute back. And uh, so I did that for a while, and now I really want to find a new mission. So um, when I heard about this opportunity, I decided to run so that I could try and put my skills to use. My background is in project management, program management, and more importantly, program creation. And I feel like that's really where I can bring the most to this role as, um, as someone who has a lot of experience and has spent the last decade essentially building different programs for different people um, so that I can bring that to bear. So hopefully that's what I can do for you. And I think I have one minute left, so I'll try and be quick. Um, I have uh, seen a lot and done a lot in my time working on Drupal 8. I also feel like it really helped me to get in touch with the community and find out, um, especially through the, the cons and, and camps that I went to and spoke at, that there's a lot that needs to be changed and fixed in order for the community to have a better, more integrated experience in core and contrib projects. So I'd really like to focus on that. Um, and I know it's kind of vague, but there's more information on the uh, profile about that. So I'll let you guys read that. I'll just sign off before I run out of time. <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. And Tom, why don't you round that out for us? All right, thank you, Holly. My name's Tom Grandy. I'm from Ohio, and I work for a nonprofit that serves uh, 23 different school districts and three county area. So we're a really very small shop, which is basically me and one other person who wears many other hats. Um, I think I got involved with uh, Drupal around 2010. Uh, like Shannon in 2011, Chicago DrupalCon was my first DrupalCon that I went to. And at that time was just amazed with the, the amount of enthusiasm that people had at the time. It was something that we lucked out with by joining up with Acquia to transition a lot of school districts into something that we thought would have a long lasting um, value to them uh, away from a third party application that we had. But anyway, I've been building sites since 99. Um, very small in my scope. I definitely haven't s served on any boards. I haven't been part of a, a, a Drupal 8 release. I'm just a guy in a very small shop building Drupal sites. So that's about it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Tom. All right, guys, we made it through phase one, which was introducing yourselves. You all did a beautiful job. Congratulations. Uh, that means you're all winners and we're all moving on to phase two, which is the Q&A phase. So punchy today. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the way that we'll do Q&A is um, I will ask a question. Um, I've got some questions here for folks. We'll, we're also taking questions from the community, uh, but I'll, I'll ask those questions. And then um, 
anyone who wants to respond, just, you know, give a wave and I will call on folks and you'll have one uh, minute to give a response. Um, and don't feel like you have to answer a question if you don't want to, but uh, everyone who wants to will get it a turn as well. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and I'm going to start because uh, we have a good community question in the hopper. So I'm going to start there today. Um, and that question is from our friend Steve Perkis, um, who says basically, you know, our, our job at the association is to support the community as a whole. Um, and we definitely, as Steve, as, Steve, as Steve puts it, we seem to have a choice this year between different sort of minority groups to support. And I think what we mean is minority in the sense of uh, small groups of people who have issues that they really want to see resolved. Um, how do you use your role as a board member to support these groups that want to move things forward? Um, would you, you know, how, how do you see, how do you see helping the association navigate that? So ideas would be like, would you campaign for more at-large spaces on the board? Uh, the sort of Congress idea that's been brought up, what are some of the other, what are the ways that you help the DA negotiate the various interest groups that are coming to the association with, you know, agenda items to fulfill? Hopefully that made some sense. All right. Shannon, your hand went up, so I'm calling on you. <laughs> I said this um, yesterday as well, but I feel like um, it's really hard uh, to have a coherent response when there's a lot of people that are talking. And I think it's really important to have a centralized group of people um, like the board who are going to prioritize requests, but also be a sounding board. So when you're talking about minorities, they're heard and there's two things to keep in mind first of all you want to make sure that they do get a voice and secondly you want to make sure that there's not so many voices um, that it becomes you know too many things to focus on so I think the important thing to do in that case is to get a network of people locally that will filter up information that's prioritized from those groups um, and that way the uh, the minority does get heard and it's important to make sure that those networks are international and multicultural, so that we cover all our bases. Awesome, thank you. I totally forgot to turn the timer on. You guys are supposed to keep me in check, but I'm sure that was fine. Um, all right, and then I see Schnitzel and Tom and then Jason. Yes, um, I don't think that just putting more people on the same board will any help. Um, being a board member myself, I know exactly that um, just having more opinions doesn't help. Um, and especially a board should make strategic decisions. So you don't need a lot of people for that. But we need a lot of information. And so um, knowing, for example, about the German community is that at one point, I think it was in Prague, um, we all discussed like let's let's define one person from Germany that is like a bit responsible for that, and that completely backfired because we had issues. Then suddenly the community started to fight who is actually responsible. So I think having a lot of different groups is really hard to define. One person is responsible, but we can let people themselves at the end in a community like us. What we really can provide is time. So if people think they they want to spend time and they want to bring um, the information from the community up so we can make them ambassadors um, and say like, hey, that person, if you have time, go and speak to them and they can then talk to us, the at-large members that we only need two in the board um, and can bring up the ideas. So I think we cannot really force it from the board point. We have to allow the community themselves to form, but definitely find ways to bring the information back to the board. Okay, thanks. All right, I said Tom, Jason, and then Ratchet, and then Alexandru, and I see you too, Matt, so Matthew will do you next, but uh, Tom. All right, thank you. I really like the ideas that um, Shannon and Michael brought up earlier as far as trying to get ideas from the community all the way up to the board, as far as growing the board with additional members. I don't think that's necessarily a good idea. Um, trying to have a Congress or people within different countries, I think is going to be chaotic um, and hard to can have any cohesiveness to. Um, the idea of, and I, I just really like the idea that Shannon and Michael brought up as far as having something like 
where the people can propose an idea, petition something, and then have other people vote it up through the channels and get to the board for um, to take on as far as an idea. Um, otherwise, it would be very hard for somebody at a, a level like mine to actually get an idea that might be very good uh, into the ears of the board. So, thank you. Thanks, Tom. All right, Ratchet. Um, I feel, um, you know, the voice of minority should be listened. It's, it's, you know, what Drupal community is all about, inclusiveness. So the way it can be done is, uh, you know, the Drupal community representative, you know, could get in touch with uh, Drupal Association or the board member, you know, to pitch their voice, you know, like it's been done, you know, all the community leaders. I think that's the way, you know, we can include them. And also based on the kind of impact, you know, they, they're going to bring on Drupal community and Drupal project also, you know, makes a way for it. Great. Thanks, Ratchet. Um, I skipped over Jason. So we're going to do Jason and then Alexandru and then Matthew. Great. Thank you. Um, so I, I, I think Tom does bring up a good point about the idea of a Congress um, but I'm not sure that I'm ready to give up on that because I think that this notion of representing groups um, across the Drupal community is a really important one, but I think it might be interesting to give it some more thought and is it necessarily just geographic or uh, are there, you know, effectively like representatives from other groups, people who like to write documentation, people who like to work in design. Um, but I, I think finding a structure for these different groups and constituencies in our community to have a voice, I think is really important. Um, I think geographic is certainly a natural starting point, but I do like that sort of second round that for of people um, involved in the board, but not necessarily on the board that help make that conduit possible from the community at large, filtering things up in a, in a way that is meaningful and manageable. Awesome, thanks Jason. All right, Alexandra? And David, I'll get you too. I see you. Sorry, the the Zoom window popped over with logging in. Um, um, I kind of agree with everyone else, so I'm going to echo their ideas. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I think the biggest issue here is making sure that somebody who maybe is not, let's say, very big in the community or very active, can actually have a good idea, can collaborate with other people on that good idea and that idea can actually surface to the association. So uh, maybe improve the group system to allow for more collabor coll collaborative tools and make it easier for people to self-organize. Mm -hmm. Because I think doing, trying to enforce a, a groups or electing leaders can go bad. Can go bad. Yeah, and it's, I guess it's close to what I was talking about last time about electing some sort of groups or associations uh, from different countries, starting with that and then moving, moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Matthew, and then we'll have David. So really, at its core, this is about um, giving people a voice. And uh, it's something that, uh, that I've been struggling with. Not struggling, that's the wrong word. It's something that I've been engaged with, uh, with Pfizer, um, where we've got uh, community members who are uh, from all around the world, ranging from Egypt to the US, from France to Spain, from UK to Australia, just all over the place. And every single one of them wants to have changes made to the platform that, uh, that, we're, that, we, that we work on. It's distributed and shared across the entire community. What we've done there is we've created these small groups that uh, go to the, each of the markets and they identify um, the changes that people want and they bring them back to uh, a change board, which I sit on, and we meet on a, meetly, a weekly basis with these different community members um, and talk about what, they, what their specific needs are. 
And it goes through, and some of the markets are really small. Some of them are tiny. And uh, the ideas that some come from some of those tiny markets are some of the best ideas. So we ended up in a, in a situation where everybody is getting an equal voice, regardless of whether they're from Morocco or whether they're from, uh, from the United States. I think that's really important. I think we could do something quite similar uh, with, uh, with the association. Okay. Thanks, Matthew. David? Hi. Um, so I just wanted to add a few things. I, I agree with, with what uh, most people are saying, where not necessarily um, adding more people to the board, because really um, adding more people into a room full of people trying to make decisions is a good thing. Um, and I agree that we definitely have to find a way to make sure that the ideas that are coming from these local organizations can bubble up so that even, even individuals can get their voices heard. And if they have great ideas, it can find its way to the DA and to the, to the board. But what I think is also equally important is um, I think the board could do more um, in the way of outreach and making themselves visible and communicate with people because I, I think that doesn't happen enough. I bet if you were to pull most people involved in the community, most people um, that have Drupal.org accounts don't even know if the board exists, don't know who's on the board, mm -hmm. don't know any of the things that the board actually does. And I find that just being visible, going to events, talking to people, and creating a conduit for communication is one of the best ways to actually um, find out what these ideas are and find out what the problems are that uh, are affecting people in a lot of these organizations. And I would really push for the board to do more of that. Great, thanks. And then Enzo, did you want to weigh in here? Yeah, sure. Uh, to be honest, uh, all the proposals uh, everybody say is, is really good, so I don't have anything else to, to summarize. <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs> all right. I just want to make sure we, we uh, give you a shot there. Um, mm -hmm. Good. All right. Well, I'm going to dig a little deeper into this one because I think that the issue that Steve referenced in his question is one that um, is pretty interesting. Um, I'll put it in the chat as well but here's the title of the issue um so it cracks me up um it doesn't crack me up it's not funny it's not like that it's just uh i think it's a really good example of the community and the association and the tension that steve's question raises so the title of the issue is push to get the drupal organization to update the drupal forums by petitioning to move the forums to stack exchange um, and I think the the sort of I mean you can read the entire issue it started about seven months ago it's got some several hundred comments by now or something um, but I think that the gist of the issue is that the forums need some work um, it's not on the prioritized list of Drupal Association work on Drupal.org and to date um, you know we are we have been slowly working on improving tools for folks to be able to contribute to Drupal.org from the community, um, but it's really, it's just, it's not easy because the site is really complex. Uh, we're not a typical Drupal site. So, you know, there's frustration out there, and the association's been trying to work to manage that and give folks wins where we can. Um, but again, it's just, it wasn't on the prioritized list of work that was uh, prioritized with the working groups and the board. So where, you know, as a, as a board member, where would you feel like it's right to step in and, and either help this group get heard and take action? Um, or do you feel like that's a, an association call and that's a staff move? Or what's the role of the board in helping resolve these kinds of issues? Okay, I'll let Matthew, I'll take your hand. Um, I think that uh, this is getting into the weeds. Um, and, uh, you know, a specific technology like this really, really falls to the staff, does not fall to the, to, to the, uh, to the uh, uh, board at all. Um, the staff um, should, be, should be in a position where they can listen to some of these challenges and help us prioritize, um, uh, you know, what the, what the level of anxiety is around the challenge and then raise it up to the board as, uh, as a strategic, strategic issue rather than the, the board getting into, into the weeds. Um, um, so I think that our, our role here is to, is to listen and then ultimately strategize and uh, and pass on 
uh, decisions that we've made uh, to to the to the uh, to the to the staff to to implement on. Um, but we shouldn't get into the weeds. All right, thanks. And Jason, I think I saw you, and then Alexander. Well, I, th you know, I I feel like I, I land somewhere in between um, the premise of that question and and I think what what Matthew was bringing up because it's true that if the board tried to weigh in on on every single one of these issues it would be crippling but I think that establishing a, a, an easier framework for which these things in, in in a way for these things to get sorted out um, I mean it could be something where um, that could be an opportunity for someone to do a little fundraising to develop money and time to address one of these issues. And, and I think that's an entirely legitimate, similar to what we were talking about the board doing to strategically provide funding for uh, certain aspects of development. So I, I think it's important for us to help create pathways for these things to happen, um, more so than to necessarily weigh in on are getting involved in doing them directly. Yeah. Thanks. All right, uh, Alexandru, and then I see that you want to respond, Shannon, as well. So you'll go next. Uh, I don't think that the board necessarily needs to weigh in on, on these uh, issues. What I do think needs to happen is, one, for the board to try to make sure that at least the major issues are taken into account, and second of all, to try to mediate between the people who are requesting these things and the people who actually know more about those things and have the technological or the more knowledge about it. Because even if people, for example, in this particular case, people are very well intentioned and they say, ooh, you know, Stack Overflow is really nice, let's move the forums. As you said, it's not a simple Drupal site. It, you might not see everything that's behind the scenes and it might not be a viable solution but some and maybe the association doesn't know that but there are people inside the association or the people who the association knows that can mitigate and can know how to address that issue i'm gonna stop now all right thanks all right we're gonna go with shannon and then i saw you david and tom so you guys will go next and then ratchet Okay, um, I wanted to say that I agree with Man Matthew that um, discussing which tool is getting a bit into the weeds. That said, I think that um, there needs to be, well, the UXer in me wants to ask the question why. why <laughs> um, what's prompting that discussion and is there a way that maybe, um, is there something that we're missing that the community needs that we're not meeting or addressing? Mm -hmm. And that would be my response to that type of question. Not like, oh, yeah, we should change tools, but like, tell us why this tool specifically, because maybe there's something that we can do on the board um, to influence, oh, sorry, Jason, <laughs> <laughs> to influence what, what, um, what they're really looking for um, and not get so much into a tool debate of which tool is better than what. Yeah, great. All right, David. Uh, so as one of the few people that's actually been neck deep in those conversations um, and having gone through the experience of doing the prioritization work for, for Drupal.org software, um, and particularly the conversations around the, the form issue, uh, I agree with what everyone else is saying that the, the board's not going to get that involved, but the, the board, I think, definitely needs to pay attention because those are the types of in, uh, issues that... Um, generate a lot of passion and vitriol and can eventually cause problems. Um, but I think people from all sides need to be mindful of the fact that those are, that issue and a few others like that are the kind that will have no real happy answer for everyone involved. Um, and that's one of the things I think people are gonna have to realize is that, especially with prioritization work where you, even if people agree that certain things are important, it's not always, feasible to do it within a certain quarter or within a certain year and yeah it's one of the it becomes one of those things where you have to have tough conversations and maybe come up with solutions that aren't always optimal for the people that are involved true that um thank you and tom and michael i see you too 
I have to go back to agree with uh, Matthew and, and Shannon as far as you know, getting into the weeds, but there are people who feel you know, vehemently that they, they would like to have something like this changed. And as a board member or as a board, you, you can't ignore the fact that those discussions are going on. Um, you know, to, to actually bring them into a, a discourse of some sort is important for some subcommittee way out there, but at least to, to make people feel like they are getting their voices heard and, and maybe a better tool. But I don't know, as far as board members taking action on that, I, I don't think that's the time or place. Great. Ratchet. Yep. So um, I believe the, uh, you know, the voice that comes from the community has to be carefully evaluated on, you know, what kind of impact it's going to bring. If the forum uh, stack flow overflow kind of forum, you know, is going to bring a big impact. Yes, it should go higher on the prioritization and how we can, uh, you know, do that is, you know, maybe we can find ways, you know, to tap the power of community, you know, like somebody uh, was referring, you know, maybe generate some fund and, you know, take it as a separate project, you know, maybe DA do not take it directly, but community does it. So it could be a community initiative. Thanks. Uh, and Enzo? Yes. <clears throat> well, I think uh, maybe this, this start for the board could look like as I get into the weeds, as Matthew say. But the problem is we need to, as a board, we need to look a little more behind because this kind of initiative is like a, the community trying trying to, to transmit a message. It's the same. It, that looks like, and it's my opinion, in, uh, like about the forums in the same way the IRC. is technically did functional, but it's not really getting engaged with the community. That is the reason because and other countries, I could have said half examples, in China and in Japan, they use a really alternative network to try to communicate with the local community. And that is because, that is because the, we don't have the proper channels and dynamic enough to try to generate this engagement with the rest of the community around the world and with the local community. So I, uh, I think it's beyond the forums. We, we need to discuss about what is the proper thing to do to try to facilitate the communication in several me, me, uh, levels. Great, and Michael. Yes, thank you. Um, I think I, I, I had now enough time to scroll through, and I mean, one of the really interesting comments that I see there, and I quote this, so many good ideas, all completely ignored by the Drupal organization. And I think that's, for me, that's the most of it. It's, it's, not, it's not about people want to change something or not want to change something. It's just clearly misunderstanding of how a system works, how that just not replying doesn't mean like destroying an idea or so. And I think that's the board's responsibility to make sure that people that have ideas are heard, that they get an answer. Um, it even starts, the whole thread starts that something has been dropped without telling. And I think we definitely are not a community um, in any way that tries to do something without telling each other why. I mean, I see so many discussions of people explaining each other why things are like they are. <laughs> um, and, and that's really good because only then we can really make sure that everybody understands. So I think um, we are missing a bit of way of explaining people that some things cannot be um, the high priority at all time. And I feel the more and more I think about change the Drupal.org has to happen. So I think something where to see where is the current status of something be really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I have a follow-up from Steve in the, in the, in the, uh, in the chat, actually. Um, so we do have the community initiative uh, process. So we've been working on this, right, trying to figure out how to empower the community more to do things. Um, and, and that's also a choice, right? Um, we can choose to we can choose to spend time doing work directly on drupal.org to make improvements uh, or we can choose to put some or all of our resources into making it easier for the community to contribute to drupal.org uh, where do you think we should be prioritizing our time all right michael um i think if we look at how the drupal cons are organized it's a really good way. So I've been multiple times part of the um, content team 
that chooses the, the, um, the sessions. And there, the hard work is all done by volunteers. So let's say the community initiative. Did you say, wait, did you just say all the hard work is done by the volunteers? No, no, I'm not I'm just teasing you. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I saying, couldn't help saying about, <laughs> I'm saying about the session selection. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> the session selection is completely done by volunteers, but the staff make sure that like all the information is there, that the, that the stuff can be decided, that everybody knows. So it's basically the facilitator between the volunteers. And I think that's why, where I see, and that's also a lot of hard work, even sometimes even more hard work than just choosing some sessions. Um, but it's, it definitely has to be the place where volunteers can go and say, yeah, I want to help, how can I help? And then it's the staff or the supervisor that connects them. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is, though, we have to get rid of hoping that things are done in specific time because at the end it's all volunteer based. And we cannot expect from people that they spend hours every day to work on something. And because if we do that, then we end up in me giving sessions again at Drupal Cons about burnouts and how to prevent them. So, um, but I think the Drupal Association can be more in the place of making sure that volunteers and um, the community can help better. Thanks, Schnitzel. Sorry for <laughs> interrupting you. <laughs> oh, good. I know what you do every... All right. I know you know. Um, all right. We're going to take Shannon next, and then Matthew, I see your hand. I actually think Michael said a lot of what I was going to say. Um, to recap, uh, I think, you know, there's a way to, to let the information trickle up about what needs to get done. And if you're going to focus your energy, it really depends on what's being asked. So that question is tough to answer because in certain cases, it's good to focus your energy on doing something if it's going to make a big enough impact. And in other cases, it's best to try and enable the community. So my answer is going to be um, kind of tricky in that I would say it really depends on which uh, type of system you're talking about. Did I lose you guys? Sorry, I'm getting that unstable connection. No, we got you there. Okay. Um, good. I'm going to go ahead and move on to Matthew, and I see Ratchet, and Enzo, and Alexandru. So I 100% um, I agree with uh, Schnitzel on the, on the um, whole burnout issue. Um, we've seen it. We've seen people who've left the community because of it or gone away for periods of time because of it. Um, and I think a big part of what we need to do as, a, as, a, as an association is create opportunities whereby people can contribute. Um, and maybe those contributions aren't all volunteer contributions. We've got an amazing uh, example in D8 Accelerate where when we've got somebody who's, who's, uh, who's carefully organizing what needs to get done um, and, and, uh, and lining up the people to do it, um, we can actually pay people to do some really amazing work and accelerate uh, projects um, in, in astonishing ways. Tons of other open source communities engage in fundraising for these kinds of things. And I think, um, I think this, this past year we really proved that, uh, that we can, we can um, uh, leverage the community in really positive ways um, like this. And uh, uh, that's what I would encourage us to do. Thanks. All right, Ratchet? Well, I believe it has to be a, a, a you know a, a balanced methodology. You know, where Drupal Association takes um, you know gives the guidance, shows the path, and community uh, you know where we get all the community initiatives, we get them all the right resources, so you know they do their job. Um, a very good example here is uh, you know what I've seen as Drupal Campus Ambassador Program where it has, you know, provided all kinds of resources and help, you know, to move ahead. So D is not directly involved, but it is helping, you know, us to, you know, execute that. I think that model works. Great. And Enzo. I think the Drupal Association Board, <clears throat> obviously, uh, has a mix uh, kind of decision. So the first one is we need to check it out what is the needs, the board, uh, Ambition about in the, the future of the Drupal community, taking account the, the staff and the, and the and the budget they have to try to secure some ideas, 
and also, but the community is always have been there. So maybe in some specific matters, obviously we need to take more participation of the of the of the Drupal community. But in others, it could could be completely independent. So it's it's, it's just a matter of negotiation. What is in the, in the table, and what is the budget we have, what the staff we have, and what is the the level of participation for new initiatives. So in some projects we could take more advantage of the community, and in some projects we could be more independent. Uh, this is an open source project, so the community so will be there. So we just need to choose what battles we need to fight. Ah, thank you. And Alexander? Um, I agree with Sharon and everyone, everyone else. I don't think there should we should focus on one or the other. I think there should be a balance specific to each case. But I do think, on the other hand, that it probably would be a good idea to give uh, some sort of voice to the local communities because they could bring up and surface situations that are local for example and where people can uh, who can and want to contribute but don't know how and they could bring that to the uh, association's attention much easier than trying to go for groups forums or whatever okay good um, all right David Jason you guys want to weigh in or are we good all right, David, and then Jason, sorry. So I think I'll be the one person to maybe disagree. Um, having been involved with this for the last two years, working on uh, with the software working group um, and the changes for Drupal.org, I can tell you that uh, it's not a particularly easy task to get volunteer contributions in to make software changes. And it's one of the biggest challenges that I think the DA staff faces when trying to make these changes to Drupal.org that people don't really realize. Um, cause Drupal.org is a big, fairly complicated site. It's one of the largest Drupal sites in the world. And people don't realize that it's not just a question of getting volunteers to show up and do a certain amount of work and then put a feature in. There's a lot of work that goes into the staff side of that in deploying features, but also having to do code review on all of that work that's done. Um, and that's, some of the things that take away from their time working on other initiatives that are being asked for. So it's a very difficult balancing act that I think a lot of people don't realize. Um, but it's definitely not something that uh, I think the staff are going to ignore going forward because this is what those community initiatives are part of and that's why they're being posted there to sort of figure out a way to really get those volunteer efforts in and make them more effective. But we have to be really careful about how it's done because it's not as simple as just having people show up do code and then submit the code and we're done. Awesome. And then Jason. Um, well, I think I can keep this pretty brief because I think there have been just a, a ton of really great ideas put forth, but I, David does bring up a really good point about the, that sort of rubber meets the road, getting those changes in, but where I think the association can provide some help and guidance is in the way for the community to voice and vote for things that are important to them and then establish a funding goal and actually use that as the mechanism. So if it's really important to a, a segment of the community to make improvements to the forum, establish a, you know, a goal for fundraising for that and then that money can go towards resources directly controlled by the staff that run Drupal.org to augment and, and tackle those things. And so that way you don't get into, okay, we had somebody work on something and hacking away at this, but now we have to review the code, we have to integrate, we have to do all of these things, but um, channel the funding in to the people who are already there doing the work to increase that, that capacity. Awesome. All right, Tom, I think I wanna make sure I didn't miss your hand. Sure. I, I think some of this goes back to the, you know, the whole petitioning idea that, you know, have a good idea, put it out there, see if it can go to the top, see how many people vote for it. And that way you have some feedback from the community to decide on, or at least give the board some feedback on what could be done um, or what should be done. And, and then the board can either take action or allocate funds as needed if they think that's something that, you know, the majority of the users or the community thinks really needs to be taken care of and you know it should become an initiative awesome okay well 
I think I've played enough um, bait the candidates with uh, complicated issues today. We'll, <laughs> we'll get, move on to some other topics. Um, uh, those are really good. Um, so uh, another question for you guys. We um, One of the things I'd love to hear from you guys is uh, what is a bright spot that you have seen in the association over the last few years, something that you think is exactly what the association should be, should be doing and the way the association should be doing it? Um, what is, you know, do you have an example of that, something you want to see more of? Um, and what, is that, what does that more look like to you? All right, Jason, and then we'll go Schnitzel, and then Tom. Um, well, I, th I, th I think we've been talking about the, the D8 Accelerate thing, but I think what <clears throat> is more, um, I think, broad and, and important at a grassroots level um, is the way that uh, more resources have been gathered up and made available to run small local camps. Um, and I know that there, it's still, um, you know, it still can require a little bit of persistence to get the funding part to work out. But I know that's been a huge assistance for a lot of camps to be able to get sponsorships and things like that run through the Drupal Association. And it's made it possible to get better sponsorship contributions from a lot of um, a, a lot more organizations. And I so I think that that's been a real highlight um, in enabling uh, more of these events to happen with a lot less uh, work on the part of the individuals that are trying to put them on. Thanks. All right, Michael, and we'll do Tom and Shannon, then Ratchet and Alexandru. So I basically could exactly repeat what Jason said. That was my initial idea. I think <laughs> I was one of them was, was really longly pushing for the duplication needs to support the events. Um, and the camp specifically. I know we had a lot of discussion with a lot of different people. I think we're getting there. So I want to take another point, which is I have to say, when Drupal 8 launched and the website, Drupal.org, changed, my mind was blown. Um, <laughs> and then later on, I figured out how much work that actually went into it. And I have to say, I'm really proud of the Drupal.org website now. Um, it is much better in explaining what Drupal 8 is about, what it is, and it's, it's getting better and better in not showing, also focusing for people that want to decide about Drupal, not only that want to write an issue and up upload a patch and something. Mm -hmm. So I have to say I was really impressed of the work that Drupal Station did there. Um, I think we can still do more. Um, there is still more improvement, especially I would like to see more um, case studies on there because what I see a lot of people decide about what is already built in Drupal, so show me that. Um, but we are making a huge step forward what we need. Um, so good job, Drupal Association. OK, thanks. That's better than being called a rotting fish. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tom. Sure. Um, I, I think, as everybody has said, the D8 Accelerate was a, an excellent first time to see something like that take a an idea and, and, and push it forward and, and make it actually succeed in a very short period of time uh, relatively short period of time to make something succeed uh, I would like to see the Drupal Association take on some projects that might not have been thought of before kind of like um, yeah the funding for some of the, the, the camps and whatnot is, is wonderful but like Ratchet's idea where he's doing the, the Drupal Ambassadors program. I think that's wonderful at the, the uh, I think that's higher education level, but possibly looking at um, even the secondary level for the rest of the world, you know, the, the high schools or whatever you call it in your country to try and get, there's a lot of Drupal dot, or I'm sorry, code.org going in and a lot of, in the United States, a lot of um, trying to get computer programming back into the curriculum and, and possibly if, if Drupal can, the association could go hand in hand and try and make some of that happen as well with funding. That would be awesome. And I'll be quiet. Thanks. <laughs> Good work. All right, Shannon. Sorry, I'm back. Um, so I was basically going to say everything that everyone else said as well. Uh, classic um, when you go at the end. But um, basically, I do really feel that the uh, association has had a big impact on people getting to camps and cons. Myself, especially. 
the Drupal Association gave me a scholarship and sent me to Australia where I got to present and uh, impact the community there and do all sorts of fun things. So I've experienced it firsthand and I would like to see them do more of that because I think that it gets people more involved in the community and it also creates more opportunities for them to do stuff. So um, having more scholarships, having more impact on camps and cons and getting more speakers and even speakers outside of our community um, would be great. And I think that that's one way that we can really move things forward. Thanks, Shannon. And Racha, Alexandra, and then I saw you, Matthew. Yep. So I think uh, engaging local communities is uh, something, you know, where I've seen drastic change in last one year. So something that we're discussing last year at the same time uh, in the board elections. Um, I, I've seen the approach of Drupal Association in which, you know, reaching out to local community, understanding their voice and initiatives and, you know, actions they are taking has been very really encouraging in developing uh, certainly at, you know, you know, Drupal community in India. Really appreciate that. It can, uh, you know, uh, done in a more better way. Maybe, uh, you know, understanding local community better. Maybe Enzo is traveling, I think, on Asia tour, and you know, so maybe he can stress more on that. But I've really seen that uh, making good impact in community. Thanks, Ratchet. Uh, okay, we're gonna go to Alexandru, and then Matthew, David, and Enzo. So um, I'm gonna pick two. Uh, the community cultivation grants is something that I uh, really liked and also the global training days events because from from my experience doing global training days uh, it helped uh, it helped me reach people who otherwise uh, either never saw Drupal or saw Drupal once and got very scared and people who would have never come to an even local Drupal camp or meeting because they were so scared, but uh, the allure of having a free day of training and uh, it it really helped them. And uh, these are the two. If I would had to pick two, I would pick these two. That's great. Thank you. And Matthew. So I'm going to choose something that uh, most people here wouldn't have the opportunity to see, and I think it's a uh, it's a it's a tribute to a certain extent to you, Holly. And that is uh, the fact that the, the organization is now being run on metrics. Um, in the past, uh, the organization was being run really, really uh, through, through gut feel. And, you know, does this feel right? Or does this not feel right? And at this point, um, the, the metrics that have been put in place allow for forecasting, really smart forecasting uh, around, uh, around uh, What's going to happen in the organization as we as we move forward in, in time, and that's allowed for thoughtful governance behind the scenes, excellent fiscal responsibility around challenges um, that uh, that have uh, produced great outcomes, and that's what I'm the most proud of. Uh, and it's something that people don't see, and because they don't see it, um, they don't know about it. Uh, and if it weren't working right, everybody would hear about it. So good on you, Holly. I appreciate that with the work that you put into it. Thanks. See, I asked this question just so I could feel good about myself. <laughs> David? Yeah, I was just going to say, was this question planted just to get praise? <laughs> no, I just thought, you know, we've been talking about problems for the last half an hour. Let's talk about things that we want to do more of that are working. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I was going to say something slightly different that um, having seen this from inside and out, um, I, I, I really appreciate how patient most of the DA is and DA staff because I think uh, a lot of people in the community don't realize that you Holly and a lot of other people pretty much just take crap from every single direction and most of us don't like having one boss but most of the DA has about 10,000 bosses um, and it's a really difficult thing to balance when you have so many different priorities and so many different people yelling at you what they want when they want it and why isn't it happening now um, and everyone that I've talked to from you, Holly, Josh, everyone else, I, I always see smiles no matter how difficult the conversations are or last. And, um, and that's, um, that's really a welcoming attitude to have. Awesome. Thank you. And Enzo. Okay. I think one of the big hits of uh, the Drupal Association is the organization of DrupalCon, especially starting from DrupalCon France, I guess. 
uh, Paris uh, because that is the beginning of a change in how bigs and how uh, engagement with the community and companies uh, are, are there. So this is a big success. But I want to see more changes in terms of initiative to bring the community. So one thing I really want to see in Drupal.org is officially webinars in multi-languages hosted by community leaders that could be shared in, in, in the mother talk. Um, because that will be uh, embrace more people like uh, officially we are doing more stuff uh, online for in introducing and the cost of that could be minimal because I am sure we could find uh, volunteers to lead this kind of session with good quality in Japanese uh, Korean or whatever language you want so and that will be an initiative so this kind of stuff I really appreciate it will be taking come in your association thank you Okay, I'm just going to point out for anyone who's watching the recording or, or listening in at, at this point that the webinar chat might be the funniest thing that's ever happened. Uh, I'm hoping that I can post that alongside the recording later. I really appreciate the Shan Anigans pun. So <laughs> thank you guys for <laughs> keeping the chat so entertaining while well, your answers are so thoughtful. It's hilarious. Um, okay, next question for the group. Uh, I want to shift a little bit. Um, we all know that uh, the community has to keep bringing new people into the Drupal project to keep it uh, growing and vibrant, um, to replace folks who have to move on from the community. Um, so we need to bring those newcomers in. Uh, and you guys may have seen the uh, you guys may have seen the user research uh, that we did. Um, David's raising his hand to pre he wants to answer this question first. I see that. <laughs> You guys may have seen the user research we did where we talked about what do newcomers want from the site, for example. Um, you know, uh, so there's there's the Drupal.org aspect, and then there's the whole larger community uh, as well, the way we represent ourselves in cons and out at other events, et cetera. So how do you feel, or what role do you think the association should be playing? How can we promote uh, welcoming newcomers into the Drupal community? What should we be doing? And I'm going to call on David first because he accused me of never seeing his hand. And then I'm going to go to Enzo and then Jason. <clears throat> right. So I actually have um, a session submission for New Orleans about this for a core conversation. If anyone's interested and wants to push and get that um, accepted, we can talk more about this in New Orleans. Um, it, it's something that I've been analyzing for a while and thinking a lot about with uh, community growth and how big our numbers have gotten. But in many ways, I feel that some of those numbers aren't good enough because it, it, it masks some of the problems that we have with a limited number of resources to do certain things. So we do have a lot of developers, but we also are limited in number of developers that we have who can actually work on certain problems. And most of the work for core, for example, is still done by an actually small number of people. Um, and we do a lot of things that are sort of casting a wide net, like the really large sprints that we do during Drupal cons. Um, and I don't want to take away from those, but I would like to actually see more effort put towards supporting local groups because I think that's where most contributors actually come from. I don't um, often find myself motivated just randomly by something that I see on Drupal.org. I'm motivated by working on problems with other people that I actually know locally, and that's how I've gotten involved in doing core development. And I'd also like to see us really think about possibly uh, a a real one-on-one -on -one mentoring program for developers and contributors to actually take that sort of next generation of people and get them from being the kind of people who contribute every once in a while but are motivated and have some of our top flight people to really mentor them and turn them into much better contributors so that they can be that next group and expand that small group that's at the top. Thanks, David. All right, we're gonna go with Enzo next and then I see you, Alexandru, after Jason and then Tom. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, as we mentioned in the previous session, multilingual is the key. Is one of the key. The second one half is, in my mind, it half webinars in multilingual. But maybe the most important for me is is we could uh, benchmark for other open source projects that have a multilingual manual, not not translated documentation. It's like a half a kick off a start, like a how to start, how to configure until to get a. Uh, it's a point where you get hooked with the tool because when you are new in, in this and you are doing research in Drupal, it's, it's hardly uh, difficult to try to be in contact with local community because the newcomers obviously they came from here for the internet. 
right? If you, if you if a person from let's say from Romania is going to Drupal.org and he is totally new in Drupal and he could find some initial information in Romanian to try to get in into a point he could get a Drupal functional and running. This person will be joined to the project more easily if uh, instead of he, he find a war in, in his beginning. Thank you. All right, we're gonna go Jason, Alexander, Tom, Ratchet, and Matthew. Um, you know, as um, as someone who's been involved in running a local meetup, as I'm sure many of us are, uh, but one that really struggles to get people to show up, um, I think that's actually an area where we as a group could probably do more to provide materials and strategies. I think that's really the key. Um, it's getting people in the door, uh, people who are using Drupal but not taking advantage of the community because just installing it really gets you only half of it. Um, it's once you like find the mentors, find the people that can help you answer those those like crazy little questions that there's no documentation for. And, and obviously those things can be better, but there's really nothing that beats the enthusiasm of someone sitting down with you right then and there to say, hey, let's solve this problem for you. And it's some of the most successful things that we've done in our meetup have been ones where we actually ask people to bring the problem. And, and they put it up there and it's like, I can't figure this thing out and then everybody's there. So um, resources to help get people into local meetups I think is really one of the best ways Great. Uh, Shannon, I, I noted you too, but we're going to go to Alexandru now. Uh, I think that two, two approaches could be useful here. First of all is improving the Drupal org doc website. Because if you go to get started right now and you end up to the installation settings, you get the pages for 6, 7, and Drupal 8. Mm -hmm. So it's all very confusing, and it's not really easy for someone who doesn't have any idea what Drupal is like. Reorganizing that documentation, making it more user friendly, like okay, here's what here's the blog, here's what a block is and block is and what a node is and what an entity is, rather than just delving into the administration as the second step after installation. The other one is supporting local communities, I think. Supporting local initiatives uh, at a global level, like global training days, I think it's really, really useful. Uh, the local Drupal camps, we're having one uh, in April where we have uh, half a day of free Drupal training for everyone who wants to join, and things like that. Even if it's a monthly meetup, a small Drupal camp, a global training days, uh, a free course, a free two-day event, or something like that. Great. And Tom. Yeah, I, when it comes to onboarding some of these people, I, I think there's a huge number of Drupalists out there like myself who've been to many cons, to many camps, and have stood on the sideline and have gone to sprints and, and tried to understand. And you know, if I've been doing this for six, seven years, and still I'm a little intimidated by the process, <laughs> uh, then what about that person who's just found out Drupal is really cool and I want to become a part of it? And they, they try to get started and they look at it and they think, I don't get it. Um, to make it simple, you know, whether it's through mentoring, but the, the fear that I find and that people have expressed to me is they don't want to look stupid. They, they really fear that, you know, there's all these super intelligent people. They really know what's going on and I'm going to end up looking like a you know, total idiot. And, and so they don't contribute. They don't speak up and, and, and somehow to address that, I think would be ideal because that seems to be an overwhelming consensus to people that I talk to. Mm -hmm. and it's not right. It's not fair. Great. Uh, Ratchet, and I see you, Michael, as well. So um, my point is um, on, you know, of course, you know, getting things started. So uh, from my last six years of experience of the Drupal community, most of the newcomers are interested, you know, how do I, uh, you know, get started with Drupal as a software? They're not even aware of, you know, there's a huge community that I, they can tap. So maybe, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, it was mentioned that, you know, getting started leads to installations and all. That is the place where, you know, we can have maybe some kind of video and more information data point which shows the real power of Drupal, the real power of Drupal, the community, as well as, you know, where the software is going. And that's, uh, you know, I think the first way to engage people and, you know, connect it. 
Great, and Matthew. Yep, I got you too, Shannon. Matthew's trying to unmute. I can see he's really working on it. Thank God for video. Ah, there we go. <laughs> so, so I think that we've got two problems. Um, the first is short-term problem, which is the immediate attrition that we're seeing, um, where where uh, people burn out and leave and so forth. But and and I think there are lots of things that we can do to 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 uh, to address that. Uh, we've talked about a bunch of them already in terms of camps and and having trainings and st stuff like that. But I think that the I think that the real the real place is the uh, is the long term fix. And I think that really means that we need to start working with uh, with people who are younger, um, catching them as they're as they're uh, as they're learning earlier. And a great example of that is Matthew Tift and the uh, and the work that he's done with uh, with uh, school age kids in the school district that he's associated with. Um, if you go to the uh, uh, 2015 Drip Camp Colorado um, site and look up his keynote. Uh, I think you'll find that it's pretty astonishing the kinds of work that they've been doing. But I think that that goes as far as to to to, to uh, supporting things like Days of Code in, in schools and 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 uh, and so forth. And a really great example is my daughter this year decided that she was going to do a coding class um, at uh, in high school. And uh, when she got to the coding class, she realized that there were no open source tools being used by, by, uh, by the teacher. And she's, she's been fighting, fighting the teacher basically for the last, uh, for the last uh, uh, four or six weeks to allow her to use open source tools instead. And uh, the more that we can encourage kids to do those kinds of things, um, the more likely it is that we're going to find that our community grows. I think that we need to start younger. Great. And Shannon. Um, I'm going to go back to my own experience with this as a person who had just entered the Drupal community and first of all, didn't understand, you know, even what Drupal was as a whole or how it worked. And I had to try and kind of wrap my head around it. I agree with everyone who said that we need to improve some of the content on D.O. It's amazing and it's wonderful, but it's not geared towards idiots like me. Um, and I need, I need the idiot page that says, this is what Drupal is and this is what open source community really does um, as a whole and how we can all work together. And this is how you as a newbie can come and get involved. I think that that was lost on me until I talked to Angie and she explained to me that like, oh, I could actually do something and be helpful. That's incredible. It wasn't until I went to a con that I actually learned that. And I would say finding other channels to reach people is important and being able to reach them by interest is important because you don't want to only reach out to coders. We should be reaching out to reaching out to designers. We should be reaching out to all different types of people in the community. And I feel like that's also really, really hard right now. Um, finding those people in, in different skill sets is, is a challenge. So I would say improving the different channels for reaching them and finding um, new and fun ways to reach people in different um, job types. I'm trying to find the right word, but it's not coming to me. So that's, uh, I think I'll probably stop because I'm running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Perfect. And Michael, I think you're going to round us out here. Yes. I want to mention one other point. I fully agree. We need to make it easier for people to understand. I myself feel sometimes really hard in talking to people that I feel are better than I am. Um, but I think that's more a personal. One other thing that I see, especially being an organizer of Global Sprint Weekends, the first year where we organized it, we just wrote emails to the developers that they should join. And not a lot of people came. And then we realized we actually have to explain their bosses that they should send their employees to these events. Because we have to understand more and more Drupal gets just a regular job for people. It's a nine to five job for a developer that does Drupal. But they also want to contribute. And when their companies don't support that they can contribute with like paying them to go over the weekend at a global sprint weekend and declare that as regular job work, it will not happen. And in the second year, we actually did that. So we sent mails to all the bosses and tell like, hey, please encourage your employees to come to contribute. And suddenly they came without needing to explain their wives, their children, their husbands that they're not working because they're working and they can take another day off. And um, that changed a lot. And suddenly everybody was very interested in contributing. Um, and I think that's one point 
that uh, we should not forget is that it's a job. People have other lives um, and we need, need to make sure that they can contribute during their regular job work, even maybe it's on a Sunday. Great. Okay, I think we're going to do at least one more question here. Uh, the next round of questions, uh, question, the, the next round of conversation, uh, we run this question, which is, uh, so Drupal 8 just came out and it's the first major release to really incorporate, you know, in a, in a very major way, a wholly different open source project in Symfony. So we've talked a lot about how proud we are of getting off the island and incorporating other projects into Drupal 8. Now we're having headless discussions and talking about headless discussions. That sounds funny out of context. Now we're having conversations about headless Drupal and integrating, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Integrating, um, you know, other JavaScript frameworks, et cetera. Um, it seems like uh, collaboration and cooperation with other open source projects is in our future. Uh, how do you guys feel about this? And where do you think that the association could focus its time, its time in um, forging relationships? All right, Jason. My strategy worked. I get to go first so I can say everything everybody else wants to say. <laughs> Um, you know, just uh, coming from my own perspective as a designer and someone who's um, probably spends you know as much time or more just in the general web design world as as in the Drupal one, um, I think it's fantastic the direction that we've been going in because it's giving us a, a tool, a platform now that can live in a much happier way amongst all of these other sort of more sort of pure HTML, CSS, JavaScript world of um, what everyone thinks web design or development should be. Um, so I think it's a huge step in the right direction. And I, I think it's really important for us to, to keep that going forward because I, I think it lets Drupal be great at what it is in the back end for modeling content and all those sorts of things and still bring in the best of what the rest of the web world has to offer um, in, uh, in how this stuff gets put together on the front end. Great. Uh, and then I saw uh, Alex, Alexandru, and Michael. So I think it's, it's a two-part two discussion here. Um, I think that uh, looking at incorporating other stuff in terms of PHP could be very, very useful. And but I wouldn't do it very very often. The move from seven to eight has been very very disruptive. I feel for a lot of programmers. And uh, speaking of that attrition from before, I think it's you get scared much more easily now than you used to get scared at six or seven. But I agree that it was a necessary move, and I would see us going forward. On the client side, however, I would be very very careful about adopting a JavaScript, one of these new cool JavaScript uh, frameworks. Uh, for the last two years, I've worked uh, almost exclusively with JavaScript frameworks, and I've seen how the cool thing now goes away in two months. You can look, Angular 1 was the best thing since sliced bread, then React came, then Angular 2, then Aurelia, then all these other new frameworks that are more uh, React than React, and so on and so on. So. I think it's worth looking, it's worth incorporating when it really makes sense, but I don't think it's worth picking stuff just to be modern and just to, to please uh, what the current cool framework, uh, framework is. But I, I agree, uh, at least, you know, headless Drupal, uh, Drupal 8 in general, the way web services work now, for example, and all these things are really, really awesome, and it was a very good move. Okay, thanks. We're going to go Michael, then David, who has to respond to his comment in the chat, and then Matthew. Yes, um, I think it's great that we do. I mean, Drupal already had dependencies on other tools anyway. I mean, like, we never bundled a web server within Drupal. So we are used to using other tools and depending on other tools. I think the Drupal Association can even encourage that with like one thing that we already do. We have a PHP track at DrupalCon. So there's nothing about Drupal at all. It's just about PHP. Um, so I think that's one really great step of bringing the community together um, and 
Because suddenly Drupal people talk to PHP people that are maybe doing Sand Framework or Symfony and realizing, hey, we are the same. We have the same problems. Let's work together. Let's do that. But I also think we can encourage people from Drupal to going to other places, um, like going to other PHP conferences, speak there, maybe just the Drupal station, maybe not, not specifically providing funds, but more like connecting people in between to allowing them realizing that there is so much more than just our really great Drupal cons, but there is so much more out there that um, we can learn, we can teach each other. Um, so I think we, as Drupal Association, should definitely be more connecting dots between the communities um, and yeah, finding cool things that we can work together. Awesome, thank you. Uh, and David, you get to go next. So the, the whole framework thing is a, is a big heated discussion, which I won't get into. What I want to do is give the, the proper political answer, which is that the board and the DA are not really involved with the director of the project. Um, and that's really up to Dries and the other people that are specifically involved with core itself. Um, but what I do like, uh, what I would like to see more from the association is um, reaching out to other open source communities and creating bridges on the community level. Because one of the questions that always happens when there's discussions is, well, what do other people do? And I've had discussions like that at work. Um, so like when we talk about things like burnout and local organizations and how governance is run and things like that, well, there's lots of different groups out there that exist and we can see what they're doing. We can work together on the association level. And um, I think that's a big role that the DA can play. Great, thank you. And let's see, I think I said Matthew next. Any other takers, did I miss you guys? All right, Matthew. Hey, look, my mute worked. Um, I agree, agree with Schnitzel in, in that uh, uh, adopting modern, modern technologies as, as, they, as they make sense um, is really good for the project, not just from, from a, from a uh, from a, a platform standpoint, but also from a cross pollination standpoint with other communities. And the more that we can, the more that we can be engaging with other other open source communities and working directly with other open source communities and merge and meld and blend with them, um, the 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 better off that we're going to be. I think that cross pollination ultimately is going to be critical to our success as a, as a project. And keep in mind, you know, we're we're what. Uh, um, Quite a few years in, um, we've been quite successful because we haven't uh, because we haven't said you know dug our heels in and said we're we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna change. Uh, in fact, the philosophy has been um, to 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 not be backwards compatible, to always be looking forwards. And I think that that has been painful, but also really helpful to us as a as a, as a project. Thanks, Matthew. Yeah. Shannon, did I miss you? Did you want to wait, pipe up? Way in, not pipe up. Pipe up is the wrong way to say that. <laughs> pipe down. Um, <laughs> pipe down. <laughs> no, I actually, um, to be honest, I missed the question because I had a momentary interruption. So <laughs> I was just listening during that part. Okay, good. Uh, so, but uh, if you do want to weigh in, the question was Are there other open source projects that the association should help connect with now, you know, so oh. we can bring our communities together, you know, that sort of thing? That's why you posted that. I see now. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes, I will weigh in. I, I kind of wrote it in the text in mm -hmm. the chat. But, um, that's fine. I said basically, uh, yes, I think that we should be looking at what other people are doing. And everyone said that. So we all agree again. Yay for us. And um, I would also say that I wouldn't limit us to just open source. Uh, there's things that people are doing in other communities that are really smart, that are really working for them. Um, why can't we take from those ideas as well? It's, uh, to me, a natural thing to try and, um, and do what, uh, what works without failing first. Um, sometimes you have to fall on your face in order to you know, figure things out, but if we can avoid it by looking at what other communities are doing and not just open source, then we should. For example, I think WordPress is doing a lot of things right, and um, in one of Dries' recent um, blog posts, he, he mentions you know, switching things up and, and turning Drupal inside out. Mm -hmm. um, and to not to go too far into that, but my response to that was, yes, why can't we, you know, pre-configure some things for certain user groups? 
and try and make it easier for them. This is what WordPress does. This is what a lot of CMSs do. And it makes it easier for people to onboard and get involved. And I think that it's a smart thing and something that we can take out of a non-open source um, example. So yes, we should and look outside our, our open source bubble as well into what other communities are doing. Yeah. Any other takers on this one? Okay, one more question then uh, for the group. And that question is, speaking of other open source projects, what is what is something that you see happening in another project that you wish that we could emulate? We could say proper names? Yeah, you can say proper names. <laughs> can, can you repeat the question, Holly? It, it just dotted out on me there. Sure. Um, so speaking of other open source projects, what is one thing that you see in another open source project in their community or in their, um, in their, the way that they, you know, handle their issues, et cetera, that you would like to see Drupal emulate? So let me go Alexandru and then Matthew, then Enzo. Uh, having worked with WordPress for a bit, I must say that it's horrible when you start writing themes and actually writing code for it. But what I've always admired of them is the attention of detail for the UI and how easy they make it for completely non-technical users to install modules, write blog posts, upload images, and everything like that. And uh, this is something that I would like to see Drupal doing, uh, make it much, much easier for new users and non-technical users get a very good experience out of the box. And yeah, so WordPress UI, UX would be my, my answer. Great. Um, and then let's see, we're gonna go with Matthew Enzo and then I see Michael Ratchet Tom. So. Okay, there we go. Um, so, so the thing, I'm, I'm gonna go on the other side of the, uh, of the uh, issue then um, code and experience and talk a little bit I think about uh, about uh, um, uh, the governance side of things I think that when we take a look at for example um, what uh, Mozilla and Wiki Wikipedia have done in terms of fundraising I think it's it's awesome it's successfully um, they successfully generated large sums of, uh, of money that allows them to do the kinds of things that they want to do um, by leveraging the community a little bit better. And we've been gun shy about this, and I think that we can be less gun shy about it. Um, I think the experiment, again, going back to Drupal 8 Accelerate, I think the experiment that we did last year has proved, proven that people, if they see the need and they see the value, are, are willing to, uh, are willing to uh, um, uh, pitch in with, with dollars, and I think that could make a huge difference in our success. Okay, great. So then we're gonna go ahead and go to Enzo. Okay, uh, from WordPress community, I like to have the uh, if you check the website, the documentation as initial manual for new newcomers is, is translated in sixty languages. The other thing is they have a mentor assistance for new community leaders. So if you if I want to start a new community in Costa Rica, they provide a person to try to lead that person to try to become a successful community in each country or region. So th those things I would really love to have in, in Drupal a uh, community. Awesome. All right, Michael, you are going to head out. You're going to go next. Um, I have something completely really different. Um, what I saw is a really, really cool initiative that I think is super cool is called Railscores. Um, the Rails course is an, a, a community initiative from the Rails community that said we want to empower women. We want to empower women to understand that whatever the tech is that is really man dominated right now, which is really, really sad, they can be part of it as well, that they can learn <laughs> how it works in a safe environment. So what Rails Girls does, they organize events where women that are interested can go there and learn to code. Not specifically about Rails, it just came out of the Rails um, community. Um, and it's really great. I had own friends going there, not knowing how to code, and they learned within one day what 
coding is. And they came back and they felt so much empowered and they actually applied to tech jobs because of that single day of experience. And I think that's super awesome. And I would like to see more of that also in the Drupal community. We actually, as a Maisie, support the Rails girls because I just think it's an awesome initiative, even though it has nothing to do with Drupal. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's go to Ratchet. Yep. So adoptability of Drupal to, uh, you know, non-technical and uh, semi-technical is, you know, key to success. I mean, um, so we took an example of WordPress. Yeah, WordPress is, you know, cannot, you know, be used to build that complex application, but yes, to adoptability, yes, it, it helps. So maybe, you know, that can help uh, if more and more non-technical people use it, you know, out of the box to do things, you know, simply and documentation. It, it is good, but it needs a lot of improvement. Okay. Excellent. Um, David, did you have your hand up? Yeah. See? Okay, good. We're going to go Tom, Shannon, David. Okay, I, for what it's worth, I think it would behoove us to have you know, almost like two versions of Drupal 8, one for beginners that has a lot of things ready to go out of the box, um, another one for developers and just one a vanilla start that they can they can build from scratch um, for people who are new adopters to come in and download a, a, a Drupal 8 install and, and try to figure it out I think it is very overwhelming and if there were a lighter version to allow the new user to have a lot of these built in like you were saying in some of the WordPress UX just a little bit different presence um, it would at least get them to adopt it in an easier fashion, and then when they're ready, they can take the next step over to the, the full-blown version. Can that happen? I, I don't know, but you know, there are some initiatives out there that seem to be trying to address that, um, the complexity of, of, of D8 for the, the new user. Great. Okay, Shannon and Jason, I see you too. Okay, um, I'm going to be really quick because I've got to run. Um, baby needs me. So <laughs> I think um, I'm going to repeat what was said before and say that I really agree that there is a huge technical bar barrier for people who are not super technically inclined. This personally, and I would like to see that fixed um, because then maybe I won't be so intimidated by Drupal sometimes. And I still am, even after six years. I'm still really intimidated by this technology sometimes. When I start up a new project or when I start up a new site, I'm always like, okay, deep breath, you can do this. <laughs> and I think that that's something that we can do better on and it's something a lot of communities have done better on. Um, so I'm full you know, steam ahead against, um, well, behind that, that solution and I wanna see that fixed. Great. And I have to go. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Shannon. Goodbye. All right. Bye -bye. David and Jason, I think you guys are going to be the last two. Um, yeah, I just wanted to piggyback on what Michael's saying. Um, it's, it's not a software issue as far as the DA is concerned. What I would like to see is more supported, um, not necessarily initiatives, but programs, which I don't know if the DA has ever even done in the past. So things like Rails Girls or any other programs that don't even necessarily have to be run by the DA, but could be run by a uh, dedicated, enthusiastic group of volunteers, but have some sort of official support from the DA and are empowered to act on whatever their particular mission is. Okay, and Jason. Um, so uh, amazingly enough, no one's actually said the thing that I want to talk about, um, but I think it kind of builds on, on Michael um, because you know, I think one of WordPress strengths is out of the box, you can do a thing. And it happens to be that you can really only do one thing. I mean, it's, that's oversimplifying things, but, but it's very easy for a very non-technical person to fire it up and publish some stuff. And I think that's actually where our opportunity is. Now that we have things like views and core, you download Drupal 8, you can actually build a great website. So having some, and, and, you know, this is probably a lot harder to do than I'm making it sound, but wizard-like things to create a piece of content and 
then be able to make lists of that content and blocks and stuff. Um, so giving like finding a way to step people through that process after they've installed would really allow people to start to get a lot more out of Drupal right away. Um, and I think it would be a great learning tool. Excellent. All right. Did I miss anyone there? I think we've got Matt, stand up. Matt, Matthew, did I miss you in there? No, you got an answer in. Okay, good. Um, today I took notes in who was talking with crayons, but see, I did keep track. Um, <laughs> all right. So that's it. I think we're going to go ahead and conclude things uh, now. Uh, but I just want to say thank you all for spending so much time to talk with us on a wide variety of topics. It was great to hear everyone's views uh, and also have a few laughs along the way. That's always a win. Um, and uh, tomorrow we will have our final, our third Meet the Candidates session. Um, that takes place at 4 Pacific, which is, I don't know, midnight UTC. Am I still getting that right, Schnitzel? You'll be asleep. Yeah. I will be asleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, but uh, we'll do that. Uh, in the meantime, I'll get this recording up. And uh, just appreciate everyone's time and, real, and candor. It's definitely going to be a really exciting election. You guys are really smart and fun to talk to. So thanks for everything. And I'll see you later. Have a good one. Thanks, Holly. See you, Holly. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Go to bed, Ratchet. <laughs> <laughs>